Hey everyone, it's Jellica from A Pretty Fix, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the only six weaving supplies, including tools and materials, that you will need to create your own woven wall hanging, and really any kind of small woven projects for that matter. These six supplies are the ones that I always pull out whenever I'm trying a, a new project. I will leave a link in the description box with all of these materials so that you know where you can get any one of the ones that I've mentioned. So without further ado, let's get to my six essential weaving supplies. Supply number one is a frame loom. So a frame loom is, just as it sounds, it uh, uh, looks like a picture frame with four sides. The very first frame loom that I purchased was this lap loom. Uh, which is small enough to be able to fit on your lap. And this one I actually purchased as part of a starter kit on Amazon. It's a Harrisville loom and um, I still use it even to this day. This happens to be a peg loom. So it's got pegs along the top and pegs along the bottom. So this is a really, really great and really handy piece. And I've woven a number of projects using it. Um, I've shared some of those on the blog, and in fact, I've done some tutorials on the blog where I've used that specific um, frame loom. Another kind of frame loom that you can get is a standing frame loom. The cool thing about this is that it's also got legs. So you can actually stand it up on a table so it sits right in front of you. And this frame loom is very similar to the peg loom, except it's got notches along the bottom and notches along the top. And in this case, this one is um, an extendable one. So you just loosen these knobs and then it extends into place. You can make it as tall or as short as you want, um, or at least as, as far as it'll allow. But I really like this one in particular just because it gave me a little bit more versatility um, so that it could create small and larger pieces. But there are lots of different looms on the market that you can purchase, that you can make. I suggest you kind of look at different varieties. Supply number two is a tapestry needle. So with a tapestry needle, um, this allows you to weave your horizontal pieces into your weaving. I tend to go to, to my bent tip tapestry needle. A bent tip allows you to go up and down the warp strings relatively quickly with ease and I find it very very handy. That's why I have a couple of bent tip tapestry needles. Another kind of tapestry needle is kind of an extra long one and this one's a five inch steel and it allows you to go over and under the warp strings relatively quickly only because you can get across the warp a little bit faster so you can kind of go across quite a bit before you have to pull the needle out and then go go across again and there are all sorts of ones on the market that you can try um, some are wooden some are plastic some are steel experiment and, and see which ones you like the best weaving supply number three would be yarn now there are two different types of yarn that you use for a typical weaving one is the yarn that you use to create your warp strings, which are the vertical strings that you're creating um, to create the framework of your weaving. For your warp strings, um, I would recommend that you use cotton yarn. When you're using 100% cotton yarn, what you'll find is that it's a very flexible yarn, yet it's really sturdy. And so I've never had any issues with my warp strings breaking. I've tried using some other types of warp strings and in some cases it actually broke while I, while I was warping my loom. Whereas with cotton, what you'll find is it really adapts very, very well. So cotton is great. A lot of people will try, you know, any kind of yarn to create their warp. Sometimes you can get bamboo or you can use hemp. So I would just experiment with, with the different types of uh, warp strings that you use. But for me, my go-to is always going to be 100% um, cotton. Of course, the other kind of yarn would be your woven yarn that goes across your piece horizontally. And there are loads of different yarns to choose from, lots of different colors. Um, and that's what makes 
the process of weaving all the more fun. Now, a couple of things that I would recommend when you're a beginner, you'll want to start with, um, you know, acrylic yarn, which is the least expensive yarn that's out there. I still use acrylic yarns from time to time um, in between some of the other kinds of yarns that we'll be talking about. They're very serviceable. They're great. Um, but what you'll find with acrylic yarn, if you're, if you're doing a piece and it's 100% acrylic, with the exception, of course, of your vertical warp strings. Um, it, it doesn't stack as well, so when you're creating those rows, it doesn't close the rows as nicely so that you'll see a lot of the vertical strings. And you'll want to kind of use acrylic yarns here and there sparingly, and, uh, and you'll probably then want to move on to natural fibers. So the kinds of uh, natural fibers that I would recommend would be either uh, plant or animal. So it might be hemp, it might be bamboo, or you might want to get any variety of wool um, yarns that are out there on the market. With wool yarns of any kind, it can get expensive. So there are a few different brands that I tend to use primarily when I go to the craft store. So brands like Patton, um, line brand, um, they have a, brand, a line called Wool Ease, and also Bernat and Bernat Maker. Um, those are actually all of these that I have in front of me. I tend to use these the most, though I do experiment with lots of different varieties, and you know I'm not beholden to any particular brand. Um, I just like what I like, but I do find that they are not as expensive and they're more affordable and I find them at Michael's all the time. All of these are ones that I've purchased at Michael's. So what I would recommend is that you start off with you know pure acrylic and then move on and try to um, incorporate acrylic blends that would incorporate things like acrylic with wool, acrylic with hemp. Um, so wool blends, acrylic blends, all of that kind of thing that would really create a nicer appearance to your um, wall hangings or any kind of woven pieces that you're creating. Weaving supply number four is a common kitchen fork. I use this as a tapestry beater. A tapestry beater looks a lot like a fork and you use it to bat down all of your um, horizontal rows of weaving. When you go across, I use this to bat it down to kind of stack it and make sure that everything's in place nicely. Um, I haven't really deviated from my kitchen fork. I use it, this very one, to do all of my weavings. Um, but, um, you know, it doesn't mean that a tapestry beater is in my future, it's just that this happens to be a pretty serviceable one for now. Weaving essential number five, scissors. And I would say um, investing in maybe a small pair of scissors as well as just getting a regular kitchen pair or even a craft pair of scissors. This is actually um, craft scissors. They're really sharp. I really like them, but any pair of scissors will do. Um, I like having a small one as well on hand so I can get into those little, little spots um, without ruining my weaving and it works out really well. So scissors, large and small, are also really handy. And the last weaving essential, the last supply that you will ever need is of course, your dowel. So this is your hanging dowel that allows you to hang your weaving at the end when you've removed it from the loom. And there are lots of different kinds of dowels. Um, I will use driftwood. I've also used a smooth dowel, such as this kind of unfinished wood, which I use quite a bit. And of course, there are lots of different ones. Here's a copper pipe that I will use. So all three of these options are great when you're um, hanging your weaving and depending on the kind of weave and the kind of look that you're you're going for if you're looking for something that's very textural and it's got a lot of movement sometimes driftwood is a great way to finish off that piece because it really adds to that organic quality or if you're looking for a, a dowel that really is more of a has a cleaner line or a cleaner finish then something like a clean unfinished a wooden dowel or even like a copper pipe or any kind of metal pipe would really add to the quality of that piece. 
So that is it. Those are my go-to weaving supplies. As much as I've experimented with other kinds of tools, these tend to be the ones that I go to and use most often. And these are the ones that I pull out um, when I'm getting ready to start a new weaving project. So I hope this was helpful for you, for those of you who are just beginning your weaving journey or those of you who are more advanced and you're just curious to see what other weavers are using. And let me know what your go-to supplies and your tools are in your weaving toolbox. If you enjoyed today's video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you all in the next video.